Hello everyone, today I'm making a beautiful lily using an amazing technique for the background that is so easy, effective and beautiful. Absolutely anyone could try it. Let me show you how I did it. I don't have a specific plan yet for today, but I know I want to test some textures. I was going to use my all-purpose filler. I'm calling it my because I've used it so many times. But I also bought this recently. Super Heavy Gesso by Liquidex. I haven't used it before and I thought that would be a good time to test it. So the first thing I want to do, I just want to cover the whole canvas with a layer of this gesso. Very nice. Looks like very thick acrylic paint. I'm sure it's going to be really smooth. I don't want it too thick. You know what I want to do? Like really, really, I want to test some writing. And I wonder, you know, I love a good challenge, but I do need a background first. This texture is completely different to the all-purpose filler. This is much softer, smooth. And now I've been thinking, what kind of image do we want here? And I checked the list and there were several requests for color lilies. And I always wanted to make one. I think if I'm going to have a 3D color lily, the head will have to be done in polymer clay. That will be much easier, I think. I could do it from air drying clay. But let's try polymer clay. So that's the polymer clay. Oh, this is so hard. So I'm going to soften it. I wonder if I can do it kneading with my fingers or maybe it will help if I add some Vaseline. But before that, I need to plan the head. So I want it roughly probably this big. So I took my sketch pad just to sketch a shape. So it's going to be something long here and then just like that with a longish tip. Looks a bit like an onion shape, doesn't it? That's the gap for the stem. So basically I need to roll an onion, don't I? This is just a bit of baking paper that was actually in the oven. <laughs> I, I was baking something, so oh, this is going to be hard. Well, I've got this at the moment. So what I need to do, I need to roll it. Um, I'm rolling it and I think that I prefer my silicone mat. So let's put this away. This is so nice and smooth. You can even hear the smoothness. Bond. James Bond. If I put it here, well, maybe the pencil will even transfer. Let's see. I wasn't planning this. I'm just thinking on the spot. That would be awesome if I could see a mark. <laughs> that was a good prediction, wasn't it? No, I haven't tried it like this before. Well, let's try and cut it. I might make it even bigger just to the very edge since I cut it this way. So it's you know, I can trim it later if it's going to be too big. And don't worry if there's some marks on it at the moment because it's going to be painted anyway. I will flatten the edges so they are not so raised. I suppose I could make, you know, a bud from these. So if I connect those, that perhaps will give me a little folded bud. As you can see, I am not a FIMO specialist at all. I do like working with the real clay, but this is, <sighs> I'm discovering it as a new medium and I am enjoying it. Let's try with this one first. If I fold it this way. Yeah, I think that will be a nice bud. What do you think? So now this one. Oh, the mid part, the mid part. And you know what? I actually have only those little bits of thymol little bit of white and a small amount of yellow. I didn't buy this yellow for that reason at all, but it might be useful now. I made a 3D piece lily before and that's how it started because some of you were asking me to make this one. They're kind of similar, but this one, I think this one is even more beautiful because it's so nicely folded. How do I want to make this shape? So if I shape it on the canvas, that should help us a bit. Do I want it down? Maybe, maybe that's interesting. Like this. So that section will be attached. This section will have this yellow thingy, my bulb. And then 
there's going to be a board somewhere. Let me put this inside. Maybe I'll, I'll use a needle just to make little pollen imprints or something like that. I was thinking of making the stems of air drying clay and then I realized I had some leftover stems when I was making the dandelion creations in blue. You can see the, the video here and I made some very very cute dots myself so I didn't buy any of those little beads that look like beads. I made them and that was well I think it was revolutionary. That one or maybe this one I can trim it accordingly will be for for the bud. Just need to create some kind of a connection. I probably have to make a hole and that will be the easiest thing and that will go in here. That's probably the best idea. Blunt needle and I'm just trying to make some marks but they are not as pronounced as on the piece lily so I think that's going to be enough. I didn't want the surface to be completely smooth so I think that's going to be good. We have these two at the moment and I'm putting them for 20 minutes at 110 degrees in the oven. Before I transfer it to the oven I am going to very carefully mark the sections for the lily here. I'll explain to you in a second why. And the bud, yeah I think I don't mind it in this position actually. That's it. And now super carefully transferring it onto the tray. Now I've got something, something very very exciting. I did get a question some time ago how could I add writing to my canvas? I had some suggestions but I actually thought about other other options as well and I was trying to do my own writing but not just write you know with a brush or but I wanted 3D writing. I'll just show you my little trial version. Those letters were great fun. I'm going to definitely use them someday but today I thought of something much easier, something super accessible to everyone and I bought something, I actually found something online that I really like, I'll show you. I wanted some poem or, you know, something interesting and with a very nice, hardly legible handwriting. So that's what I found. This is in French, so it's going to be even more interesting. Don't think I can read it at all. But I'm sure some of you might be able to. I don't want to put it, of course, on the flower areas. That's Hence, I made those little lines. Probably not every part will be as thick as others, but I'm, I'm trying, trying to make it roughly even, but not the end of the world if it's not. And we peel it off. I'm so curious because I know what I say. I haven't tried it, so let's see. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am in love. I am. And you know what I like? Let me show you a close up. I do like the fact that, uh, well, the letters are intact, but you've got some really sharp edges around them. They are not sort of melting down they're really, really seen, well seen. Okay, and that, probably that was the easiest way to do just this. Instead of worrying where to put the flower. Look, that's, that's easier. I know I'm probably going too far covering everything, but I'm so in love with those letters at the moment. But I'll just do the whole background. Forgive me. Just a little. I'll indulge myself and just... Just do that. As I said before, this time 
I am going to just wipe the sections later on. It's always something we learn on the way. This is super, super satisfying. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at those edges. Those letters were standing. Okay, now the bottom part. Can't stop because it's so much fun. I <laughs> keep going. <laughs> All right. That's the end of it. Gorgeous. Well, I hope it's saying something nice. I am hoping there was no translation for this sheet, you know, which was quite disappointing. Because I was really curious. I am going to wipe those sections off. And roughly... Um, I'll just do this. It's going to be predominantly monochromatic with some colours. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. Well, this beauty is getting dry. I got those flowers out of the oven. I was worried that they'd be too flimsy, but no way. They're absolutely sturdy, each part. Now, because they were imperfect and there were some dirty marks, I'm going to paint them probably a couple of times with white. Just white. Now I'm wondering what colours do I want in the background. I don't want it too dark, but yet I do want some darker sections. I took out some of my pouring paints and I think I'm just going to dub them and see if I like it or not. And also I will have my tissues ready if I don't like it. It may look pretty traumatic at the beginning because I'm just going to actually spread my pouring acrylics just like that. See if it's any good. Actually, it's lighter than I thought. I thought it's going to be a darker color. Let's see what happens if I do this. You see how pretty that looks now? I think I'll, I'll add a bit of this brown. I also should have some gray. So I'm trying to use what I have at the moment and see if I like it. That's looking nice, isn't it? You know, if you wipe wipe off too much you can always add more when it's still wet and in the worst case scenario if something goes completely wrong we can come back with white on top so not really risking much here oh yeah i do like gray as well i'm actually pretty pleased with both you know look how quick and efficient that is and you are getting some very very nice results I tried my pouring acrylics in the background and now I've got some leftover actually alcohol ink. I mixed brown and black. Well, I'm experimenting further, so I'm just going to spray it and see if I like it. There's some water in it as well. Ooh. Oh, no. How much do I want? I, I quite like it. It gives me a slightly different shade as you can see and I don't mind it. I do like this kind of spray effect as well. The combination of just those two colors and a bit of spray. And now I'm thinking because I have more sort of browns, probably the yellow will be okay with the yellow with the flower, but I still might change this. So at the moment it will really stand out and the stem as well. I was thinking long and hard what to do with the stems. You know, in real life, the stems are very green. There's part of green going up here. But you will agree with me, green on this will not look good. And of course, it's a fancy flower. It's a sort of my imaginary flower. So, therefore, no green. I'm just going to take the stems down. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my pouring brown and maybe a bit of brown. I'll just rub onto it and then create some shadows. That's what I'll do. I think that's the only thing I can do to make it match the canvas in a way. This is burnt amber. This is basically undiluted paint. And this is my pouring mix. On its own, I think it will be too dark. But we'll see how much I'm going to use. Probably mix both a bit. Really small amount. <laughs> I know it's going to be all brown now once I do it, but there's no other way. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm never sure. I might be making a complete mistake, you know, but... Well, as brown, that's not a good idea. So what we're going to do... A little bit of brown and a lot of white. This way I didn't have to do the adjust, you know, the old brown. So that creates some shadow. Right, I'm going to do the same to the smaller pieces. I found this color now, it's called Portrait Pink by Dali Rowney. And I thought maybe I could do sections of the actual flower with this instead of brown. It's slightly similar to the background, so perhaps that will work. If not, of course I'll change it. Oh, what do you think? Should I add a bit more brown? Well, if we add white to it, let's see what happens. You see a thin layer of white, it's awesome. I think it will look nice. And I'll do the same to the end of this one. A little bit of gold onto the yellow. And I also am planning gold leaf, yes, yes, yes. So I haven't used gold for quite some time. I was using blues and silvers for I think most of the gen of January. It's going to be nice. Uh -huh. And with gold leaf, I'm hoping it's going to be lovely. I'm trying to put some gold on a couple of letters here and there because I don't want them on the background. I'm using this. So this is what we have at the moment. I haven't glued it. You see some letters in gold. I just touched them with gold. This is gold and a tiny bit of shimmer here. But at the moment I'm thinking, well, apart from adding gold leaf, I'm still considering adding a leaf here because it maybe looks a bit empty. I'm thinking of actually adding the leaf and at least testing whether it works. Let's have a look at online what the shape are. And actually, I did pick some leaves today that are kind of similar, but not identical. So one is, I don't know, one's got the similar shape and the other one's got those veins. This one is from uh, Peace Lily. So I might try this one and press the veins down. So let's just roll some clay and we press the leaf down. That's really nice. I'm just wondering whether to kind of cut it out, make it a bit smaller. That looks better. Let me just press the edges down a bit. And then we are going to test it on the stem. So let's see where is the best position for the leaf. I think that that looks fine here. I might kind of curve it a bit and maybe even overlapping the stems. Okay, so the leaf is ready. It's going to the oven. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to add some gold. I think it's time to put it on. I like separating it in smaller pieces. Definitely a section here as well. Now the thing is I have to remember where I put it. And now all this edge as far as I remember. Okay, now a soft brush. So we've got this. That's probably too much, but as I said before, I can take it off anytime. And I probably want it a bit uh, less uniform, not so perfect. Maybe with a different brush, or maybe I'll even scratch it with a needle just to get the uneven edges. It's too perfectly stuck. I'm going to attach the stem now. It's going to be first. Uh, this is super glue, multi purpose super glue. I was considering using just super glue, but it's too runny. This one is a bit thicker so I can control it more. Now this lovely baby. For this one I'm going to use both. I'm going to use this glue and the strong and quick super glue. This one in the middle. I'm going to wait a bit. And the super glue on the edges. Very quickly painting the leaf brown. And then I'll probably wipe it off as I did with the stems. 
Fimo is so nice because you can have it so quickly. You know, I managed to glue the pieces down and I already have this. And this is ready for me. Add a bit of this color as well, just for good measure. And unless I want to put some gold leaf on, on this, I think I'm finished. Little touch up with gold. And oh, it's looking so nice. I'll wait for it to get dry and then I'll attach the stem. And I am happy. Well, there we are. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. If you would like to help support the channel, you can find the original for sale now on my website and extended tutorials behind the scenes and much more on my Patreon. And a huge thank you to all my lovely patrons here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.